Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Fitness to Influence. I'm super excited about today's guest. Today we have Jackie Kokus, who is a Boston content creator and mom of three. And she recently got a surge of new viewers, all thanks to a little trial known as Karen Reed. I've been following you for a year or so, Jackie. We've right. known each other. So thank you so much for joining today. I'm so excited to hear all about your journey and so that other people listening can hear about how you went from maybe being a working in an office to a stay-at-home mom to a content creator and having your own business. So thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. So first off, I want to hear about Jackie growing up, kind of what you were into, what you loved, and then where you ended up going to college and studying. So people have an idea of kind of what your background is. Totally. So I grew up in Central Florida. I've lived in Boston for 12 years now, though, but I went to the University of Central Florida and I had never lived anywhere else. So it was a huge shock to meet my husband and get engaged. And then he asked me to move up to Boston. And being here now for 12 years, I'm like, look back, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I've lived here for that long. But yeah, I went to school for event management and I always thought I would live in Central Florida and work in hospitality and tourism there. And that all changed when we moved to Boston. I got a few different jobs here and eventually got back into event planning here. I worked at a nice restaurant, planned social and corporate events there. And that was kind of like my intro into the city here. And so you're in events in the city. You got pregnant with your first on your own because I know when you first started yep. sharing content online, you did share your infertility journey. But tell me about that transition from going from working into sharing your life online. Yeah, exactly. So I got pregnant with my first in 2016. And I worked all the way through the pregnancy in a restaurant on my feet all the time. And I was like, this is not sustainable. So I decided to stay home with her when she was born in 2017. And I'm not the type of person that can ever sit still. So I started sharing my life online and just posting about like mom life, things to do with my daughter, things I was doing with her and just kind of motivating other moms to get ready every single day. That is something that made me feel better and get out of the house. And that's kind of where I started posting. And so when you first started posting, did you have a business plan? Was this for your friends? Did you have aspirations to grow your account? So my social handle is Iced Coffee Mom. And it started off as kind of like a joke between my husband and I and a few of his friends. And I was like, if I can like make this something, it's going to be really funny. And it kind of just organically grew. I never had a business plan for it. I was just like, oh, let me just throw this online, see if it sticks, see if it works. And the more I shared consistently, the more I realized, okay, people really do enjoy seeing my content. And I was starting to really become myself on my page, you know, posting humor and lifestyle stuff. And that's what people wanted more of. They wanted to see inside like what I'm actually about. And it just kind of started naturally evolving into a business. You nailed it right there. People listening might not realize what you said, but when you're yourself, people gravitate towards you because they feel like they know you. And I'm sure you feel the same way when you're at a playground and a mom comes up to you and she's like, oh, I didn't know if I should say something, but like, I follow you. And I'm always like, please come and say hi, because if you exactly. follow me, we would probably be friends if we lived in the same town, if we had like kids the same age. I think people just really, they follow people that they have a connection to. They trust you. So a lot of your content, so you don't necessarily share a specific product, but you work with a lot of different brands. And my question for you is, do you, this is three parts, do you reach out to the brand? Do the brands reach out to you or do you, are you just posting what you think, you know, other moms, because you live in Southie, other moms need to know about Boston living? Yeah, a lot of it is just me posting what I like to do on a day to day. Like we go to the Children's Museum, like we go and get coffee here. So that's really where my content is. I have a lot of brands reach out to me. I actually don't know if I've ever really reached out to any brands aside from like a few things that I know would line up naturally that I like love and use all the time. I actually have one collab coming up soon that I reached out to. But a lot of it is brands reaching out to me. There's 
you know, my inbox is full. I used to have an, a very active website and blog. And so occasionally I still get people reaching out through my website and wanting to do blog posts and things like that. But it's always been brands that are reaching out to me. If I love the brand and have used them before, it could be just an automatic yes. Most of the time, if I've never heard of the brand, I want to try it out, feel it out for myself. If it works, yeah, let's maybe talk about a partnership. If it doesn't work, it just kind of goes to the shelf. And I should have said this in the beginning, but you have an audience of 30,000 Instagram followers and seven, over 7,000 on TikTok. You recently, though, got a big bump. So a lot of these partnerships were before you got this big surge. Right. And I kind of know, I think what the surge came from, but I want to yeah. hear it from you. So you, so for those listening who are local, you guys actually even, I think it's kind of nationwide now. So something in my throat. When the Karen Reed trial first started, you started doing daily recaps. And as a mom who lives in a Boston suburb, you are all over the group chats. People would be sending the daily recaps in the group chat. Did you see what she posted today? And, you know, I had to keep myself back from being like, I actually know her in real life. <laughs> like, I, I felt like you were a celebrity. I shouldn't say were. You are a celebrity and everybody kind of looked to you and followed you. So tell me about that transition. It shouldn't even be a transition, but I shouldn't say a transition, but you're posting mom content and then all of a sudden you're right. posting Karen Reed. So you know, moms like true crime podcasts, which I think is kind of how you kind of yes. segued into it. But how did you get into that? I have some questions on this. Yeah. So my first post, one of my first posts like years ago, I actually have it pinned on my TikTok is I shared six true crime podcasts that I binged. And I started getting a lot of followers on my TikTok just like from that one post. And I was like, oh, I think I need to share. This is a huge part of my life. I watch all kinds of true crime. And I have watched trials live like on court TV all the time. So I watched like the Alex Murdoch trial. I watched Casey Anthony when I was in college. I grew up in Orlando. And so I like tried to even go to that one. And I've always like really been interested in when they're in the courtroom and hearing the law side of everything. So when Karen Reed started, my husband was like, you know, you're going to watch this every single day. It was his idea. I have to give him credit. He was like, why don't you film a daily recap? Like at the end of the night after the kids go to bed, you've watched all of this. I just want to make this clear. Like I take care of my children. <laughs> like, people are like, how do you have time for every minute of the trial? An AirPod in, like my kids are very young. They nap a lot. So yes, I've been able to listen to all of it. But yeah, so that's where it started. It was his idea. And it just grew and grew and grew. And I started posting them exclusively on TikTok, but I would share them on my Instagram. And people on Instagram and TikTok, it's like two totally separate audiences, really. But the people on Instagram were hooked. So I started uploading it to YouTube, too. And that kind of grew a little bit. People just wanted to figure out, like, how can I get a synopsis of what actually happened in less than 10 minutes for the whole day of the trial? And I love it. That's like one of my favorite things to share is true crime, podcasts, murders. And it just really connected with me because we're from this area. And like, this is happening right down the road here. So it's one of my favorite things to share. Well, it, it was fascinating. And like, I literally would be like, oh, Jackie hasn't posted yet. Like, and yeah. I would like go <laughs> and I would literally seek out your stories, which is key to being yes. like to having a, a successful account. Like the fact that people were sharing or I know I was sharing to be like my friends would talk about it and be like, oh, you got to see Jackie's like recaps today. Like this is just watch this. Like you don't need to worry about the rest. But how did you go about would you film it at night after the kids went to bed? Yeah, mm -hmm. most of the time it would be I would try to do a part one maybe when my twins were napping like midday. And then after all my kids would go to bed, usually 8, 9 p.m., then I'm filming the rest of it. And it's like a 10 minute video. So the upload, the editing, everything, I'm like, I can easily film it in TikTok. So that was my thing. I didn't want to make this like a whole production. I was like, I just want to get the info out there as quickly as possible. So yeah, after they would go to bed, that's what I would do it. And would you script it or would you do yes. it on the fly? So I would take notes every day of the trial. I have all the notes still saved. I even refer to them sometimes like when I'm going back and like talking about like updates that have happened with new motions and things that are continuing on. But it's all in my notes. And then there's a great TikTok feature, actually, the typewriter feature. I'm not sure if you've ever used that. 
I'm sorry, what am I saying? It's not a typewriter. What is the thing called that you read? A teleprompter. Oh, teleprompter. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> the teleprompter feature in TikTok? Yeah. In TikTok, it's integrated in there. It's a tool. So I, I would just copy and paste my notes, and I would just read my notes there. I know. So I, like, abandoned TikTok, and sometimes I'll go back to it, but I think I'm going to go back to TikTok now. I didn't yeah. need a teleprompter I, in. It's really good, like, feature that's just super easy from my notes app on my iPhone, I easily just copy paste into that feature and I can film a whole segment just like in one take. I had no idea this is a game changer for me. So I hope anyone listening that like (laughs) does content creation who maybe not, maybe I'm a dinosaur and I didn't realize this. I guess I spend so much time on Instagram. So for you, where do you spend more of your time on Instagram or TikTok? I do spend the majority of my time on Instagram. I am a content consumer on TikTok and I do scroll a lot. There's a lot of brain rot over there. So, but usually like when I'm working, it's mostly on Instagram. So sometimes if I haven't posted on TikTok in a while, I do feel like I need to update my audience over there just to kind of keep things cohesive and not be like, hi, like I'm here again. And we all know that like consistency is key. Totally. And so for you, how do you plan out what you're going to post each day? I know you do a lot of trends. Like, do you wake up each day and you're like, I'm going to post this? Or do you kind of look because you're a consumer, look and see what other people are posting? Be like, is there any trends that jive with me? How do you plan out what you're going to post and how far out do you plan if you do plan? Yeah, a lot of what I post comes from trending audio and trends. And those trends happen on TikTok first. And then I try to like bring them over to Instagram. So I do a lot of that. But I do have a plan to a lot of my content. Some of the best advice that I got early on in my career from it was actually from a photographer that I worked with on a regular basis. She recommended that you look at your Instagram feed and those as like a snapshot, those first six posts, the snapshot of like who you are. So in those six posts, you want to be able to see like everything that this person does. So if your niche is fashion, you know, then you want to make sure that there's fashion in that six posts. So I do everything kind of on like a rotating thing. So it's like things to do out. I'll post like one funny thing, a fashion thing, maybe something that's branded, but I keep that in that six window snapshot. And does that include your pinned posts or no? No, it doesn't include my pinned posts. So fascinating. Yeah. I, people are always surprised. I'm like, I plan, but then the next week I won't plan. Yes. And it's like, right. I, I also, I know I should, and I struggle to. So the, the, the name of this podcast is Fitness to Influence. You're obviously yes. not a fitness person. You <laughs> no. have tried the fast with your friend, Jocelyn, yeah. but obviously you take care of yourself. How do you balance your own wellness with your business and your kids, it, it's a lot. Like, do you wake up early and exercise? Do you not exercise? Because you're a city mom and you do yeah. a lot of walking. Right. So I don't do like a lot of exercise. Recently, I have gotten into Pilates and I'm trying to find something that works for me. But a lot of what I do is walking around the city, pushing a double stroller up hills with my kids and chasing them around. A lot of my wellness really comes from like the inside out, like what I'm eating. And I read labels. I shop consciously. I'm like on this huge trend of like canceling brands that aren't going to like conform to what we deserve as parents. So a lot of what I care about in the wellness and fitness space is really inside out. What Mm -hmm. everybody out there who's listening, like with what you buy, that's what they're going to keep making. So if we all just stop buying it, they're going to stop making it. Not for everything, but for some stuff. And it's like a give and take. And you're really good about this. Like, yeah, I'm going to have a glass of wine. I'm going to have a margarita. I'm going to have queso dip. Like there's a balance with everything. One other question that I had is we obviously work from our phones and we are consumers. So we are, sorry, content consumers. We see the effects of screen time and being on our phone in front of our kids. And, you know, I literally... I see these as I'm on my phone and my kids are like, you know, taking a bath. And I'm like, so do you have any boundaries? How do you try to, you know, keep from being on your phone in front of your kids? It's definitely changed a lot, like month to month even. I try to be on my phone and working when my children are napping. When I'm at the playground, I'm not on my phone at all. Like I'm active and involved with them. And especially living in the city, like When I'm out and about, I can't be on my phone. It's just not a safe thing to do. So when I'm home and they're napping, I'm on my phone after they go to bed is when I get most of my work done. But it's really hard. My kids watch iPads sometimes. They're watching TV and movies and shows. 
And just like as a society, I think it's really important that we are aware that like, you know, let's bring out the books. Let's bring out the puzzles. I remember a kid I was with a few. No, this is probably like five years ago. He told me he had never done a puzzle and he was probably six years old. And at the time I was like shocked. I was like, what is happening? Because I know you've had held an iPad. I know you've watched video games and played video games and things like that. But like getting back to like those types of things, playing outside, that's really important to us as a family. Yeah, it is. It's it's so tough. And especially those of us who like are on our phone, like I'll post something on Instagram and then I'll be like, all right, I'm now going to be present with yeah. everybody. I'm going to come back out of my room. But then I'm like, wait, they're getting questions like and you I know, have to engage like I have to answer these messages and really just setting up the boundaries on the app has been good for me too. like my phone reminds me like, OK, you're entering like the nighttime, like time to wind down. I know you get those notifications, too. I do. I'm like, ignore, ignore sometimes. But most of the time, it's really important to find those boundaries. What would you say is the biggest game changer for you going from just having a small, friendly audience to actually then, you know, getting brands to want to collab with you? Was it kind of gradual or was there a game changer? Was there a new tip or trick or something that you just tweaked ever so slightly? I would say that it's definitely been a gradual thing, but like, don't give up because I'm saying that like there, it, it's nothing overnight is going. Even if I grew like exponentially with Karen Reed overnight, brands don't want to work with you like just for that single reason. So I think it's really just like coming back to the fundamentals of like consistency is key, engaging with your audience. If you're not getting comments on your posts and your engagement rates are low, it's probably because you're also not engaging on other people's posts. So just coming back to the fundamentals always. That's a good one. All right. I'm going to finish this out with a rapid fire. I hope you're okay with this. They're not <laughs> brain busters. Some of these are a little bit like fitnessy healthy related, but not all of them. And so here we go. You ready? Yeah. All right. Intermittent fasting, yay or nay? Sometimes. Any answer is an acceptable answer. You said you didn't work out, but if you do, when you do work out, what time do you do it? It's going to be midday for me when my kids are in school. Are your kids picky eaters? Yes. Isn't that the worst? You, you mm -hmm. slave over these like healthy meals and then they're and just like. We both have three kids. Like I'm not making that many meals. Like we're all going to eat the same thing. And if you eat it, you eat it. If you don't, you don't. Yeah, my, my oldest has learned how to cook himself his own food if he doesn't like what I serve. I love that. Okay, <laughs> my oldest is getting there too. Do you know who, I know this is supposed to be rapid fire, but do no. you follow the cucumber guy on TikTok? No. Do you know who he's, oh my God, his name's Logan and he's the one who's like, oh my God, what does he say? I don't know, but my daughter like makes his cucumber recipes and every night before bed, she wants to watch his TikTok videos because it's all about food. And she has her own knives now and she makes his cucumber recipes. Does he make them into like cute, like fun, like art? It's in like the deli containers, you know, and you like shake the container up and oh. it's like soy sauce and green onions. And so it's kind of helped her step out of her comfort zone. Now she eats seaweed. So what does he say? That's amazing. Oh, my God. It's going to drive me nuts if I... You, the listeners know what I'm talking we'll, about. We'll look it up. And the other yeah. thing, too, is like social media gets such a bad rap, but like in certain ways, like mm -hmm. that, like that's kind of cool. That's awesome. Yeah. If we can get our kids to eat like a more variety of plants, like let's do it. Exactly. Bring it on. Do you have an email list? No. That's, that's my, that's my challenge for you. You need nope. an email list. Yeah, I do. You're, that's, that's my challenge for you. What's your favorite protein bar? I don't eat protein bar. Do my kids eat protein then? bars. I like weird things like peppers with like cream cheese and everything but the bagel seasoning on it. I like chia seed pudding. I really am not a big snacker. I I'm guess. not either anymore. Yeah. To be honest. If my kids have like something laying around, I'll have like the Annie's bunnies or something like they're dangerous. The next four are a variety of health things that I don't know if you've tried, but do you dry brush? Yes. Oh, red light mm -hmm. therapy. No, but I want to get into it. Cold plunge. Yes. So I did it for the first time and I'm obsessed. And saunas. Love. And if you had one piece of advice, you kind of already said this, but I'm going to ask you again anyway. Piece of advice for someone starting out, what would it be? I hate when people told me this, but like being consistent and being authentically yourself is the most important thing on your page. Like people are going to know if you're being fake and people want to see your true life. 
And all right, wait, one last question. My son has a hockey game in Southie at okay. noon on a Sunday coming up. Cool. Where should I where should I go? Where should I bring the kids? Because we're not going to just like drive in for the hockey game and come back. But I, it's been so long since I've like been out and about yeah. in Southie. It's so fun. Well, where would if, you recommend we go as like a family or maybe like a few of us go? Yeah. I mean, there's so many good like restaurants. Our favorite thing to do on the weekends is go to like Castle Island Brewing. Shy Bird is over there. They have a great outdoor space if the weather is nice. But you really need to try Petula's if you haven't been there. I have either. not. Okay. Where is that? It's not very kid friendly. Maybe for a date night coming to Southie. It's brand new. It's owned by the owners of Loco and Fat Baby, which I know you're familiar with. And the food is so good and the vibes are just like immaculate. I actually did not know that they had a brewery out in Castle Island yet, like now. Oh, okay. So the location is on Old Colony, but it's okay. called Castle Island Brewing. But it's awesome. There's bocce outside, pet friendly on the patio. It's really cool. Yeah, I lived in Southie for like one year. No, no like way, three actually. Years. I, I don't know if I knew that. Yeah. When I was like, when I first met Nick, yes. Wow. Yeah. It, I lived on <laughs> East 7th and then I lived over like on Tudor, which is like yep. closer to, to the train station. My sister married a guy who's raised, was raised in Southie. And so her, her, my sister's family has a lot of Southie connections and she was there up until right before 2016. Oh. So a lot, lot, lot of Southie roots. I love yeah. Southie. I, I mean, I it's there. changed so much. Like, and now that like Seaport has really developed, it's just like, we have everything we need. People are like, oh, do you want to come over to Cambridge for dinner? I'm like, why? I would never. Even when I lived Sorry. in the South End, I never went to Cambridge either. We would go to dinner there, but like never. It was it was it was a lot. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I love this conversation. Thank you. Yeah, we always have so much fun when we hang out. So I knew yeah. this would be fun. And if anybody has any questions for Jackie, you can go DM her your iced coffee mom on right. Instagram. We will put links to those in the show notes. And anything else you want to share? No, thanks so much for having me. I honestly, I've been a big follower of yours for a long time. You're right. I did the faster way and I messaged you when you were starting out with them. And I just love what you've built. Thank you. And we are excited to follow you in January. Um, Lots to come on that. I hope I hope I'm not ruining anything for my sister, <laughs> but she got jury duty six days before the trial is supposed to start. Wow. To dead them. And I'm like, you are like, you're not. You're kidding me. me. No. Oh my gosh. Wow. Now that I said it, she's going to get cut. <laughs> I think we need some more women on Heron's jury. We'll see what happens. So <laughs> she, she like wants to get picked and I'm just like, you're not going to get picked. And she's definitely not going to get picked because since I just said this, someone's going to find this and be like, <laughs> no, sorry, no. Mary. I just ruined it. And today's her birthday. <laughs> oh, happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll post, we'll, we're going to air this next week, but uh, yeah, happy birthday, Mary. I ruined your chances of being a famous Karen <laughs> Reed jurist. All right. Thanks, Jackie, so much. And awesome. thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next time. Bye.